Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick, and this is kind of an old topic from like last week or whatever, but I wanted to cover, I wanted to just give my opinion. I was going to do this video a while ago, but uh, a couple things came up and uh, I never got around to actually getting the pictures I wanted, even though it only took me like 20 minutes to get the pictures and this video all set up the way I wanted it to. It doesn't have any transitions, screw transitions, it just cuts off seconds of the picture being up there. So in this video, there's no transitions. Uh... But I'm going to be talking about who is the better, who is the best running back in the NFL right now. The argument is between AP and Shady. But I also threw in Charles um, just because he he's the fastest running back that's really good. Chris Johnson's the fastest running back, in my, I think. Yeah, Chris Johnson would be the fastest running back, but he's not the better than Charles, if you think about it. Uh, but let's get into this. I'm really just going to be doing the main argument. Charles is just in the picture. Uh, so starting out with LaShawn McCoy, uh, he is 25 years old. Uh, he was a second round draft pick by the Philadelphia Eagles in 2009. Uh, he is, this is his sixth year in the league. Uh, he's 5'11 and 208 pounds. Um, he has benefited from a fast offense um, with a... Um, McNabb and Vic, both mobile quarterbacks. Vic, even a mo more mobile quarterback. Um, so, anytime the ball was, uh, whenever Vic would get the ball in the pocket, uh, the, usually the defense commits one extra player to the box for running quarterbacks. On average, they commit one extra player, which, um, since McCoy is such a good receiving back, it gives him room to come out of the pocket or out of the backfield and catch balls because there's one less guy out there to defend against running backs and all that different wide receivers and stuff like that. So they they tend to um, favor wide receivers and leave the running back a little bit more open. Uh, Adrian Peterson is 29 years old, drafted eight years ago in the in 2007 in the first round, seventh overall by Minnesota. Uh, he is 6'1", 217 pounds, so doesn't have a whole lot of height or weight on uh, McCoy, but... Um, he's a lot stronger than McCoy. He has had pretty much a terrible team the whole time he's been there. He had that one year with Brett Favre when they made it pretty far, and um, I think that's about it. I don't have any recent memories of the Vikings doing any miraculous things. Uh, they had the, what was it, two seasons ago they made the playoffs, um, but that was, that was the year AP ran for 2,000 yards. So, you know, when your running back almost breaks the rushing record, you should make the playoffs, but... You know, when your wide receiver breaks the receiving yards record, you know, you think you should make the playoffs, but, you know, the Lions didn't. So, who knows with stats like that. But let's get into their seasons. 2013 season for rushing, uh, McCoy had 314 attempts, 1,600 yards, which was the rushing leader for the 2013 season. He also had nine touchdowns. Um, he benefited from uh, Chip Kelly's... Um, Oregon style offense, the offense he really ran at Oregon, only a more pro designed offense. It was, it's like the Oregon playbook twisted a little bit to turn it into a more pro style offense. Um, but it, it's a, it's a run, run first kind of off. He kind of changed it to a pass. It, it's about a 50 50 now, but it, it's designed around a run first offense. Um, I know this, I watched Oregon. Uh, for the past like five or six years, um, and I know I know I watched him back when Dennis Dixon was the quarterback, but uh, I, I know that offense really well um, from watching it. I watch like every game, every season, so I know it pretty well. AP's rushing yards and uh, attempts: he had 279 attempts, 1,266 yards, and 10 TDs. He also missed two and a half games, I believe. Uh, so you could kind of do the math and add on you know, two and a half more games, what, that's probably like 315 attempts and 14, 1500 yards, depending on what he ran, probably still wouldn't have beat McCoy out for yards, I don't, maybe, depends, maybe if he had a 200 yard game or something, he'd have to have at least like 120, 130 on uh, both of those games, and then a nice, um, well, about one four, one, 150, yeah, 150, and then he'd have to have like a 75 yard half, he'd definitely get a lot farther in touchdowns, uh, I would think he'd get about 12 or 13, maybe 14, uh, had he played the other two and a half games. But he didn't, so these are the stats for the 2013 season. Um, McCoy had a better year. Um, we'll get into the... We'll get, actually, we'll get into the rushing yards. Um, 
by seasons. Uh, so this is McCoy's uh, five-year uh, rushing. He would played in. He has only played in all 16 games twice. I uh, missed one game in both 2010 and 2011, and missed four games in 2012. Last year was his very first year getting over 300 carries, getting over even 275. Uh, he'd only eclipsed 1,000 yards twice before last year in 2010 and 2011. And um, his highest touchdown season was a 2011 season where he had 17. Uh, first downs, he had 84 that year. That was his best season to date, except for yards, I, technically rushing yards. Uh, last year, he was fumble prone. He still fumbled. Last year he was fumbled. He only fumbled it once this year and lost it. Uh, he's fumbled it nine times uh, for seven loss in his five-year career. No real season other than last season sticks out. Um, if you go by body of work, there's not much there except for the 17 touchdowns. Look at APs. Uh, he's had three full 16 seasons, uh, 115, a 14, a 12, or two 14s and a 12. Uh, obviously, 2012, almost 2,100 yards. Um, he has averaged at least 10, or not average, he's had at least double-digit touchdowns every single season, uh, despite one year only having 200 carries. Um, two 10s, we had four 12s and an 18. Uh, he was fumble, he was much more fumble-prone early in his career. Recently, you know, three fumbles the last two years for two of them lost. Um, he has been, he's much more fumble-prone than McCoy. Uh, but AP um, tries to truck more than finesse, so he gets laid out sometimes and uh, e easy strips um, because of the way he uh, tries to run the ball. Um, in 103 games played, he has 2,000 attempts, so he's averaging 20 attempts a game. Um, so these are the receiving stats. These are uh, career receiving stats uh, because one of the big arguments of why McCoy is better than AP is receiving. So AP has... Er, uh, McCoy had uh, 539 yards receiving last year, uh, which I know for a fact when we get to APs, APs is not that high. Um, he had 52 receptions, and this was not his most reception year. He had 78 in 2010, and he had more yards that year. Uh, he didn't average more yards, or average more the, what am I trying to say? He didn't average more per reception. Uh, he also, his longest um, catch and run was last year of 70 yards. He had two touchdowns in both 2010 and 2013, and in 2011 and 2012, he had three touchdowns apiece. Also averaged, uh, he averages 7.8 yards a season um, on average per reception, and um, he does get targeted at least 60 times a season. That 56 was his first year, so I don't really call it. Count that. Uh, AP's receiving stats are not that awful. He, rece he re received the ball 29 times last year for 171 yards and a touchdown. Um, he's not really known for receiving, but he doesn't have awful receiving stats. Getting about at least 100 yards, um, 150 yards a, a season. Two under that, he had a 400-yard receiving year in uh, 2009, which is a little bit, which is comparable to McCoy's last year. Uh, he averaged 10 yards a reception, had a 63-yard uh, long uh, run and 16 first downs. That's another thing. Uh, McCoy's first downs are, uh, are are much lower than AP's um, because AP uh, is handed the ball on third down instead of with the Eagles. They threw for it usually, um, and with uh, AP, he usually powers his way for the first down. So uh, first down receptions, most of his receptions are for first downs, 43 receptions, 16 first downs, 36 receptions, 17 first down. All right, getting into the postseason stats here. I think they've each played three seasons in the postseason. McCoy has never won a game. In 2009, he had five attempts for 24 yards and a 14-yard long run. That were his only stats. Uh, in 2009, he also had one reception for nine yards. Uh, nothing big there. In 2010, he had 12 attempts for 46 yards. Uh, nine was his long and one first down, so nothing huge there. Uh, 2010, he had four receptions uh, for 36 yards, uh, 16 was long, and he also fumbled, uh, was recovered, but he also fumbled. And then last year, he had 21 attempts uh, for 77 yards. Uh, he had uh, one touchdown rushing, and then um, receiving, he had uh, four receptions for 15 yards. Uh, also in 2010, he um, fumbled, or I already said that, he uh, so nothing 
anywhere near impressive uh, with his postseason stats. AP in 2008 had 20 attempts for 83 yards um, and had two touchdowns and two first downs. In 2009, he played two games, so he has won a game in the playoffs, I guess. Uh, he had 51 attempts for 185 yards, three touchdowns and eight first downs. And then in 2012, he had uh, 22 attempts for 99 yards, almost at 107 first downs. He also fumbled the ball twice in 2009. He did not catch a ball in the postseason in 2008, but in 2009, he had three receptions for four yards, uh, but the, or no, for 33 yards, and two of those receptions were for first downs. And then in 2012, he only caught the ball once for eight yards. So, you know, AP is not a receiving back, but that doesn't mean you can't be the best back if you don't receive the ball. Um, running he, As a running back, he is the best uh uh, running back. Uh, he's not the best receiving back, obviously, um, but he's the best uh, quote-unquote running back. Uh, but if you look at it, um, in my opinion, Adrian Peterson is the best running back in the uh, NFL. Uh, you could throw arguments up there for Jamal Charles and LaShawn McCoy. In my opinion, Jamal Charles is better than LaShawn McCoy. Uh, McCoy just had a better offense. Um, Charles Charles didn't have really any receiver help. They could load up on him when he came out of the backfield. McCoy had Deshaun Jackson and the emergence of Riley Cooper help. If he would have had Macklin, his yards probably would have been even bigger. Uh, Jamal Charles, Dwayne Bowe was awful last year. And uh, Alex Smith isn't really a throwing threat, like a huge throwing threat, like um, Nick Foles was last year. Uh, so, in my opinion... They go in the order as they are on screen, AP 1, Charles 2, and McCoy 3. I could figure out, um, if I really sat down, I might be able to figure out someone who's even better than uh, a couple, maybe Charles or McCoy. But yeah.